In this guide, you're going to learn exactly why you suck at top lane and simple, easy to apply ways to fix it. My name's Hex, I'm a multi-season challenger player that's been teaching League of Legends here at Skillcapped for over 10 years. I even created one of our most popular courses where I taught how to get diamond as a top laner in just 30 days. It documented my entire climb with over 14 hours of content. And if there is one thing I've learned about climbing as a top laner, it's that everything starts with winning your lane. Here's the good news, winning your lane is way easier than you think it is and by the end of this guide you're going to learn everything you'll ever need to do just that. So here's the first big myth about top lane, that it's all about trading. This couldn't be further from the truth, it's actually the exact opposite. And the first video in our brand new top lane essentials course explains why better than I ever could. Not a single high level player will ever argue over two things. First is that top lane is without a doubt the most unforgiving role in the game. If you make a single mistake in this role, it feels like you're unable to play for the rest of the match. The champions in top are incredibly scary, and you're likely playing a melee versus melee matchup. So if you fall behind, it is impossible to walk up without just instantly dying. Which brings us to the second thing every high elo player knows, that wave control knowledge is by far the most important for top laners out of every role, and that it is probably the most critical skill you can learn to get better at it. Like we said, you're likely in a melee matchup where you don't have access to range wave clear to try and farm safely. Other roles can often push waves from really far away to avoid danger, but in top you have to get up close and personal to farm. So if your wave is in a bad spot, it is unlikely you get out of it unscathed. Not only that, but a matchup can completely swing based on where the wave is crashed. As you can see, this Darius is struggling to trade versus the enemy Aatrox while the wave is here. The lane feels unwinnable at the moment, so you'd think that both players are relatively equal in skill. But when the wave is in the middle of the lane, the Darius instantly looks like a better player. He's just running the Aatrox down, and the matchup looks completely different. The point we're making is that you cannot play top lane properly unless unless you care about wave control. And by the way, you can unlock this full course through the discount link below. It's completely risk-free since if you don't rank up while actively using skill capped, you get your money back, no questions asked. All right, so you now know the real most important skill in top lane is wave control. Does this mean you have to learn a ton of different wave control tactics and nuanced positions to dominate? Well, no, not at all. Check this out. Here's a high platinum Renekton. Notice how Renekton arrives in lane level one and is literally doing nothing. It's almost like he's waiting for Darius to arrive so he can start trading with him. Then once Darius comes out of the brush, Renekton gets that trade, but just gets destroyed, which eventually lets Darius hit level two first and zone him. From Renekton's perspective, he probably thinks Darius is just overpowered. I mean, he literally just ran at Renekton to outtrade him. Well, here is what every top laner gets wrong. When you arrive in lane at level one, your primary goal is not to trade with the opponent. That's secondary. Your primary goal is to simply auto attack the minions to get the push lead. And here's why. Notice here how Renekton is going to land a ton more auto attacks on the minions compared to Wukong. Then when Renekton's ability is off cooldown, he can look to land it, but the goal is to get what's called a double value spell. You're looking to damage the opponent and the minions at the same time. Now the ability is on cooldown, so we're back to spamming auto attacks on the wave to secure the push lead. Then, once the ability comes back up, we can look for another double value spell. You repeat this pattern on the first wave, auto minions, and look for a double value spell when your ability is up, as once the second wave arrives, the first melee minion will spike you level 2. This sets up level 2 all-ins on the opponent, which can outright win you your lane in the first 3 minutes of the game. Basically, the matchup won't matter if you get the push lead, since the level 2 spike is so powerful. And the majority of top laners simply aren't aware of this concept. As we saw in the Platinum Replay, where neither Darius or Renekton knew they needed to auto minions and both just sat AFK at the start of the lane. So step one in top lane is literally just making sure you get the push lead on the first wave by making sure you're autoing the minions whenever you can. Great, this sounds simple enough. You'll probably head into your next game, put this into action, get that push lead early, land some double value spells, hit level two, and then the opponent sits a mile back, not falling for the level two all in. Guess what? This is still winning. When the opponent doesn't fall for your level two all in, you then transition into what's called a cheater recall. Recall. Step 11 in our wave control course on our website perfectly summarizes how to do a cheater recall, so let's watch it. A cheater recall is a really famous early wave strategy and one of the deadliest tactics you can pull off for a big lead if it's done properly. Here's how it works. On the first wave, get the minion advantage by damaging the wave more than the enemy. As the second wave arrives, look to maintain your minion advantage as much as possible. Don't make the mistake of over pushing though, as you don't want to crash just yet. That's because you want to crash precisely on the third wave. So once it arrives, push as quickly as as possible to crash it into the tower. Now you can take a free recall while your opponent is distracted with the wave. Now you'll have an item advantage with full health and mana on top of that, so walk back to lane. The wave will have rebounded back to you, so you can now freeze and force trades with your item advantage and play the lane normally from here. You can use a cheater recall in all three lanes to get a guaranteed advantage right at the start of the game.
Great. So what you're going to see is Renekton follows that advice, gets the level two spike, transitions to only last hitting to not over push the wave. Third wave arrives, so we hard push it to set up your recall timing, and then you head back to lane with an item advantage while the wave pushes back to you, letting you set up a freeze. You'll see how this one tactic wins Renekton his lane. So now Zed is being zoned from minions as he can only last hit with his Q due to Renekton's item lead. At the same time, whenever Zed gets too close, Renekton can go in for a trade. This pattern of denying minions and engaging for winning trades continues, until eventually the enemy jungler tries to gank to relieve pressure, but it's a waste of time since Zed is so low. And speaking of which, once an enemy gets low enough, you just push to set up a tower dive. We'll talk more on this later. For now though, Zed has been zoned a ton of CS, ended up dying, and losing the wave to the tower, all from this one cheater recall tactic. So this is your very simple game plan, get the push level 1, and either get a level 2 all in to win your lane, or you transition into a cheater recall if you don't get the enemy low enough in health, at which point you come back to lane and start forcing winning trades. So, this will work against the majority of players you face, but what about when you don't get the push lead at level 1? Whether it's due to the enemy knowing to fight for it, or the matchup just sucks for you, or you have to give a leash, like in this game. Well, here's what you do. Your goal is to take minimal damage level 1. You don't try to fight against the push, you're actually hoping the enemy over pushes and crashes a wave level 2 so they can't cheat or recall. This does mean at some point you're going to be giving up CS, especially once the enemy is going to spike level 2 on you. Once the wave crashes into your tower, you're just focusing on last hitting until you're level 3. As once you're level 3, you're equal in levels with the opponent and can begin to start looking for potential trades. This is because when an enemy crashes a big wave into your tower like this, it creates what's known as a bounce back or a rebound. The third step in our brand new top lane essentials course explains this concept way better than I can. When you crash a wave at tower, it will often stall like so. This causes the wave to eventually slow push back the other way. The major reason it's so important to understand bounce backs is because slow pushes have far more trading value in lanes where both champions are melee. But another key factor that bounce backs provide is safety. Top lane is also the most vulnerable role to multiple factors. For starters, it's the counterpick role. If you're in a bad matchup, you will absolutely feel it way more than any other lane. You all know how awful it feels to be counterpicked here. Not only that, but it's a very snowball-y role. If you fall behind, the game is unplayable. So you need to be able to avoid ganks, dives, and all-ins as much as you possibly can. Bounce backs are not only your best friend for getting leads, but also to keep you safe from bad matchups and ganks. Let's break down all the aggressive and defensive plays you need to know how to play around bounce backs properly. Let's start at the beginning. After your opponent crashes a wave, it will eventually bounce in a slow push in your favor. Your goal is to build up as big of a wave as possible, slowly pushing it to your opponent's side of the lane. During this time, you can be very aggressive aggressive looking for trades, especially early on into the game. Like we said before, more minions gives you an easier time to harass. That's the simple part. The push is both the most aggressive part of a bounce back, but also the most vulnerable. The problem is that although you have a slow push going, you are pushing towards your opponent's side of the lane. This means that you can get ganked, or if you take a bad trade, the wave can be frozen against you, and so on. So if you're in a bad spot, you're low on HP, or you're in a bad matchup, then when you've got a bounce back slow push going, only focus on crashing the wave. Don't focus on trading or anything like that. If you play on your bigger wave during the early levels, your opponent probably doesn't have the wave clear to fight you with so many minions around. As long as you crash the wave, you will be able to neutralize the lane. This is because of what happens after you crash the wave. Your opponent is now stuck in lane, unable to move. Not only that, but you now know for certain that the wave will bounce back to your side of the lane eventually. You can use this information to plan around building a lead or stabilizing a bad lane. So for example, Scion knew that this was a bad lane state, so he focused entirely on crashing the wave. One of the best things you can do off of any crash is simply to base and heal up while buying items. This is how you can neutralize a lot of bad lane matchups. The reason this is so effective is because you won't lose almost any farm while you're gone. Because the wave is pushing back into you, you're going to come back to wave either close to or at your tower, which you can farm up easily. Then if your opponent based, you'll be alone like Scion is here, and you can crash again. And if you crash again, you can play safe and even repeat this process. Or as a hypothetical, if the Garen had stayed, Scion would have had a massive item lead. Either option was good for him in this rough early lane. Okay. Okay, so that was a lot of info and we're not even halfway through the video, so let's stop it there. Basically, when this wave crashes, the first step is hitting level 3 to equalize with the opponent. You'll then have that bounce back, so if you're stronger at this point, you can look for aggressive trades as the enemy is so overextended that you have a ton of room to run them down in a trade. If instead you felt weaker due to the matchup, you simply focus on maintaining a minion lead and building up a big wave off your bounce back instead. Regardless, both scenarios will usually result in you being in this exact spot. You'll hit level 4 before the opponent, due 
to your minion advantage and have a big wave built up. It's worth noting, a lot of the times the enemy will actually just die to you overextending during this time. We'll cover this later. However, if instead you get an enemy really low but didn't kill them, like you saw in the Z clip, then this is a great time to tower dive, like we taught you earlier. If instead the enemy is too healthy, well, you just push this wave into setting up a recall. That probably sounds familiar, and yeah, it's pretty much the same game plan as the cheater recall, which is why I like to call this a delayed cheater recall. So we now have the item advantage and the enemy is pushing back into us. And so whenever they overextend, we can look to trade with our item advantage and you can see how this once again sets up a solo kill for us. So let's quickly recap our game plan early on. Level one, we look to get the push lead. If we do, we either get a level two all in on the opponent or they play safe. And so we cheat a recall, get back to lane with the wave pushing into us with an item advantage and look to trade on the opponent and zone them from CS. If an enemy gets low enough, we always break the freeze to push and set up a tower dive. If we don't get the push lead level one, we look to play safe and take as little damage as possible, even if that means giving up CS. Once the wave crashes, we'll hit level three. That's our signal that we can start to look to play aggressive. Into good matchups, that means looking to trade while the enemy is overextended up the lane. And into bad matchups, that means focusing on maintaining your minion lead as you build up a big wave. If the enemy doesn't get themselves killed during this time, you'll end up in this spot, level four, while the enemy is level three with a big wave built up. If an enemy is low enough in health, we of course always tower dive. But if they're healthy enough to survive, we turn it into a delayed cheater recall. Head back to lane with an item advantage and look to trade aggressively as the enemy overextends with the wave pushing into us, often setting up solo kills for us. Great, so you now know how to play the early part of the laning phase, but what about the rest of it? Well, lucky for you, there's really only one concept you need to understand, and it's that top lane is effectively just taking turns slow pushing into each other. For example, here Wukong is building up a slow push off a rebound. With such a big minion advantage, it can be quite hard to win any trades into him unless you have some sort of big advantage. So often, you'll just sit back, let the wave crash into your tower, and then you start setting up your own slow push back into the enemy off that rebound. When the wave crashes, the enemy will often use it as a recall timing to get an item advantage. This is incredibly important, we'll explain why shortly. Your response to this is to slow push so you build up a big wave to counteract that item advantage. Then, once the wave is big enough and far enough up the lane, you crash it to set up your own recall timing to get your own item advantage. The enemy will respond by, once again, building up a slow push off the rebound, crashing that wave to set up their own recall timing. You then respond by building up another slow push off the rebound and crashing a wave to set up your recall timing. Well, hold on, you might be thinking, didn't you just teach me that after you cheat a recall, you get an item advantage and when it bounces back, you can go aggressive. So why is it that you're letting Wukong push the wave into your tower and not going aggressive off the rebound? Well, let's look at the previous examples to learn why. Yorick made two mistakes. He over pushed and crashed on the second wave, so he didn't have enough gold to cheat a recall. And since he didn't recall, it meant he had no item advantage when the wave rebounded. At the same time, he overextended instead of playing safe off of the rebound, resulting in a trade during Renekton's slow push, or Renekton's turn. This put him low in health, so once Renekton crashed the wave and recalled, he came back with a huge item lead and a health lead. This is why Renekton could go aggressive and kill him, despite Yorick having a rebound. Zed, on the other hand, made one simple mistake. Renekton crashes the wave and recalls to get the item lead. Notice how, once Renekton gets back in lane, Zed is level 4, while Renekton is level 3. Zed also has a big minion lead. What Zed needs to do is use this small timing window to push the wave to try and crash it and set up his own recall timing. Instead, Zed plays way too scared, and so Renekton is able to set up a freeze and start thinning out minions. This results in Zed missing his timing window and now being in a horrible position. Compare that to Wukong in the exact same position. He's going to fight in this spot to make sure the wave crashes so he can get out of this and actually recall. Basically, if everyone is playing perfectly, the laning phase can result in just taking turns slow pushing, crashing the wave and recalling into each other on repeat. However, the vast, vast majority of your opponents will not be playing perfectly. The most common mistake is they'll trade into your slow push timing, basically when it's not their turn, setting up a checkmate position for you. If they recall, you push the wave and they lose all the minions to the tower. If they stay, you tower dive them like we taught you, getting a kill and denying all the minions to the tower anyway. The second most common mistake they'll make is they won't recall after they crash their big wave. This means they didn't get to recall to spend their gold on items. So once you finish your slow push into a crash into recalling, you're back with an even bigger item lead, letting you break the rules, fighting back on their turn to slow push. And the third most common mistake they'll make is they don't use their slow push to then crash the wave. If they get too scared, you can end up thinning out the wave and setting up a freeze with your item advantage. And suddenly, with you having an item advantage and the wave in front of your tower, they can no longer crash the wave to set up a recall to buy items of their own. Great, so you're now pretty much ahead of 99% of the top laners you'll face and have a game plan for the entire laning phase. Well, almost. The last thing you need to understand is that everything we just taught you will no longer apply from around levels 7 to 9. 
This is for several reasons. First, once a champion is level 7, they'll have 4 points in an ability, which is usually their best wave clear ability. At level 9, they'll have 5 points in it, so these are the levels where champions unlock very strong wave clear. Second, as the game gets later, freezing is simply no longer as strong. This is because the whole idea of freezing is that you're denying minions from the opponent as their minions kill yours, forcing them to move up to last hit or give up the CS. The problem is, later on, giving up CS like this isn't as punishing. Minions don't scale, they give the same amount of XP at level 1 or level 18. At the same time, it requires more experience to level up the higher in level you are. What this means is that level 1, giving up 2 waves, could be the difference between being level 1 or level 3. At level 7 though, giving up 2 waves could have no impact on your level at all. Players also have access to more items, their ultimates, and boot upgrades, letting them roam faster while also hitting roams harder. So, while you're freezing and they're losing a wave or two, they're getting kills and objectives elsewhere. Long story short, hard pushing will pin the opponent down, preventing that scenario. And third, by pushing, it gives you a roam timing, which is often the best way to snowball your lead in top. This is because the majority of the roster in top lane are melee champions, so often when you get a lead, the enemy top laner will just turtle at their tower. If you try to damage the tower, they just get to trade on you from safety from under their tower, and they're usually bruisers or tanky champions, so it's not like you can just tower dive them from 100 to 0. An important trick when doing this though, when you implement this push into roam, you need to place a control ward in the river brush. This is because even if you end up not getting anything done on the roam, it often sets you up to get a winning trade if the enemy face checks the brush, or they just assume you recalled or are roaming, and so will move up the lane to push. So when you get back to lane, it lets you get behind them without them knowing, and forcing a winning trade with your lead, which again can get them low enough to set up a tower dive on them on the next wave. And if they just play passive avoiding this, well that means you'll get to any fights in the river first, combine that with your lead, and it's an easy snowball from the winning fights. And of course, you can always look for a mid lane gank off your push into roam if you see a good opportunity to do so. And now you have a simple but effective game plan to win and snowball your lane. Next is what to do once the laning phase ends. And to prove just how good our new Top Lane Essentials course is on our website, let's give you a sneak peek into the macro section. If you've watched any macro content before, you'll know that macro basically boils down to pushing minions and playing around the pressure of those waves. To put it simply, if no one pushed in any side lane waves, everyone would just group in mid and 5v5 teamfight all the time. If that was the case, the only skill needed to climb would be learning how to teamfight, which is obviously not the case. As a top laner, you are likely the most self-sufficient champion on your team. You're probably a durable tank, a great duelist, or a mobile carry. You're also likely running the summoner spell teleport. This means that you are usually the most suited player on your team to push inside lane waves. And by pushing those waves, you give you or your teammates the ability to play around the pressure being created. Which brings us to the most important macro concept you can learn, winning the laning phase. You have to remember that both top laners are usually going to be the ones side laning in the game, typically against one another. Whoever is stronger is going to be able to push waves into the other player's tower. So one player will have a lot of pressure, while the other will have very little impact on the map. This is why winning early is so important as a top laner. You will have infinitely less options than your opponent if they're stronger than you. Here's what you can expect if you're losing. The enemy top will likely push waves onto your side of the map. Your job will be to catch the waves they push and to prevent them from just pushing your towers. Because they're stronger, they will be able to move first on the map. So if they push a wave and then rotate towards your team, you will always be late. That's why you need to try to save teleport to react to their plays, so you can join the fight as well. We're not saying that's all you can do when you're losing, but that's what you should expect your job to be from behind. You may be thinking, what if I don't have teleport? Well, that sucks. That's like asking, what if my opponents have Baron, Elder Dragon, and are 20,000 gold ahead? We're exaggerating, but sometimes there's nothing you can do when you're behind, especially as a top laner. You just have to pray your opponents make a mistake and throw. Just do the best you can. Which is why you want to have ideally won the laning phase, or at the very least be capable of pushing waves. After you push a side lane, there's two options. You can either group with your team or remain in the side lane. We'll discuss split pushing in a later video, but let's talk about what grouping with your team should look like here. Pushing a wave to your opponent's tower forces a response. If the enemy does literally nothing, then they are losing farm and taking tower damage. They must do something as a response, or they fall behind. Let's take a look at an example. Jace and his team are all calling that they'll be contesting Dragon in 50 seconds time. Jace even pings that he's on his way, while pathing to the complete opposite side of the map. This will be one of your bread and butter macro plays. You want to push side the waves before the objective has spawned. It's important you do it 20 or 30 seconds in advance at the the very least. Now that Jace has crashed this wave, the enemy team is feeling the pressure. They either have to force a dragon fight immediately, or they respond to Jace's push and send someone to defend. In this case, the enemy top laner chooses to defend and teleports up here. The second that he does, Jace counter teleports to join the dragon fight and helps turn it around. 
and just like that, he helps secure his team a dragon despite them playing from behind. This will be your basic macro rhythm in most games. Push a wave, force someone to respond, and join up with your team. Let's be clear, this won't always yield a positive result, but the point is that you keep trying it over and over again. So for example, Sejuani pushes the wave and forces the enemy Gwen to respond. Then she recalls and pass mid to join up with her team, achieving nothing at all. That's fine. By pushing wave so aggressively, you don't lose any farm while you're trying to group with your team. You just have to go back to a side lane before your opponent pushes the wave to your tower. This is a low risk, high reward strategy. If you get nothing, all you have to do is go back to the side lane and try, try again. By the way, we're only halfway through that video and we also cover how to use teleport and how to split push. So if you want to learn how to climb ranks fastest top lane, then this is the course you've been looking for as it covers the A through Z of everything you'll ever need to know to rank up as a top laner. It's completely risk free to try since if you don't rank up while actively using skill capped, you get your money back, no questions asked. You can get all of this through the discount you can only unlock through the link below. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description below to get the rank you've always wanted this season. All right, and that will do it for this one. We here at Skillcapped want to thank you for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.